Hello, thank you for joining me. Today we're gonna to be tooling up this belt pattern. This is one of three patterns that come in the belt pattern pack available on the website there. Now I already have that transferred over. You'll notice one thing though, is I never transfer that border line with my stylus because I don't want any variations in that. So I'll actually come back with a set of dividers here and we'll transfer that line so I get a good crisp borderline marked. Right off the edge there. All right, now I gotta make sure to keep moving my, my belt pattern here. So I got you zoomed in close so we can get a good shot right up of what we're doing. The first thing I'm going to do is cut in this border, and when I do that, I'm almost locking my wrist and pulling my whole arm back. This one I'm not going to be able to move my pattern a whole lot for. So I want to get a nice straight line there. All right, thank you guys for taking your time to jump on here and watch this. Whether you're catching us live here on facebook or you're watching the replay on youtube i appreciate you spending your time to watch that if you are live be sure to shoot questions at me i'll try to address those as we go here and one of the first questions i see coming up is how wide is your border um, and that border is roughly a quarter inch wide this one's maybe just a touch thinner than a quarter inch um, i kind of just eyeballed that but that's about where i go on those borders Okay, go put my knife away. That's a little early yet. I still need to cut cut her pattern in. Okay. Trying to do this where we stay in frame, but I want to address a couple questions that I've got from other videos too. Well, one of them was about connecting the points. They noticed when I was doing those cuts that I was not connecting my points. You can see I'm leaving a little gap there. That is on purpose. The reason being, I don't wanna create a weak spot that will lift up over time once we, um, once we tool that out and bevel those. So I keep my cuts held back and I don't necessarily always connect those with the knife, but they'll connect when we bevel so they'll have the appearance of a connected cut. All right. Okay, right along this pattern here. Using our transferred lines as guidelines, but I'm not afraid to go off them a little bit if I need to, if I didn't transfer it with a super smooth line. It's way more important to me that we have nice smooth cuts. Those are the, the foundation of our tooling. Once we, once we go to running our bevels, it's hard to run a good smooth bevel line if you don't have a nice smooth cut, right? Working our way through the pattern. Thank you, thank you guys for taking your time to watch here. Um, I see some of the names popping in, and some of you are already in there, but if you haven't heard yet, there is the 23 plus crafters community. So what that is, is you can get in on that and you'll receive uh, email updates, not like a whole pile of them. I'm not gonna flood your inbox. Um, but when we release new classes, online courses, new patterns, those will get released to the crafters community first with significant discounts. So um, those of you that were already in the community before we just released the 
online drawing course, which came out um, yesterday, that uh, you guys received huge savings on that. Um, and so I want to be able to extend those savings as you guys are in that community. Just know that when we have new releases, you guys are going to be first to know. So if you want to be in there, um, let me know. I will put that link in the comments when we get done here and make that available to you to sign up. It's a free community to be in. It doesn't cost anything. Just simply fill in the form and getting in there. Okay. Get my weight out here. Move along with this border beveled. I've, anytime I have a, a border like that, I like to bevel it first. Simply just to get a nice crisp border. I don't want anything... I don't want to be beveling a line and accidentally hit into that border at all because that will stick out like a sore thumb. <coughs> and I use, use this bevel a lot. I always get a lot of questions on it. This is a... 2x steep, so it's an XX steep Berry King checkered bevel. And that's uh, being so steep is why it's not laying a ton of leather down out there. You get a nice sharp line with it, a really good crisp look. One thing to watch too as we're going along here, you noticed I went down one side of the border, I turned that belt blank around, which it's just a small piece of a belt blank, right? Just the width of the, or just the length of the pattern, but I turned that around once to get this side of the pattern beveled, but now I'm not turning that belt around again. I'm gonna go down and I'll bevel all one side that I can reach and then turn it one more time. I'm gonna get just a little more water on here. It was getting a touch dry on me. We'll let that sit in there for just a second. Um, let that absorb in there. You can see that absorbs pretty dang fast. But I, I like the efficiency of not spinning that belt all the time. Um, a small project, a little wallet project, you can sit there and spin around and, and bevel your way through that and it doesn't take as much time. If you have a full belt and you're spinning that around every so often to get this line and then if I wanted to bevel this one, spin it all the way around, you eat up a lot of time doing that. So uh, I'm going to keep this going the same direction. We'll work all the way down here for everything I can reach, meaning that I can look at which the face of that bevel. Um, so when I say reach it, I want to be able to always see where the face of that bevel is. So if I have to get turned too far out of position to see that, then I'll wait until I come to the other side to bevel it. Appreciate. I see some of the likes and hearts coming in, the thumbs up and the hearts. I appreciate that. That uh, lets me know you guys are enjoying the content that we're doing and it's worth worthwhile uh, putting this stuff out there. So I do appreciate that encouragement. And if you know of anybody that 
may enjoy this, you can feel free to tag them in that or share this out. There is, uh, especially if you're live here on Facebook or catching it here, there is plenty of negativity and stuff happening on there. And we would like to do the best we can to turn that to a positive note. So um, nothing like learning something new that can make things a little bit more positive, right? I see a comment on there. Carla, you're actually tooling this pattern on a gun sling. That's awesome, Carla. Um, well, hopefully, hopefully I can show you something in this video that may may help a little bit, may uh, bring a little something to light that you didn't already see in this pattern. Okay, asking about if I had filed some of the checkers off of this bevel. When I first get a checkered bevel, uh, a lot of times they will kind of grab, have, be really aggressive. And so I can take a light, almost uh, just a light emery paper and barely buff a little bit. Um, and that'll just take some of the aggressiveness off. This particular one's been used so much that it's, if we can get it to focus there, it's actually started to take a bit of the checkering off of there right at the tip. But that's that's just a whole lot of use. Um, it's not that I file or grind that down at all, but I will. I will just kind of polish one, just a touch when I first first get one. Okay, I'm gonna tip this camera. See if we can't get just a little bit better angle for you there. There we go. Is that better, you guys that are on there watching? We can see down a little bit better on what we're doing instead of just shooting out there. There we go. See a couple of thumbs up. Must be looking all right to you at that, that vantage point. All right. Looks good. Thank you, Miss Shannon. John, oops, hit the camera there, and John commented on here, said he was thinking this was smooth bevel all the time, and well, it is not smooth. It uh, kind of gives that appearance. It's pretty fine checkering on there, but I don't know if that'll focus very well on it or not, but I, I don't run any smooth bevels, actually. I, I like them all checkered, um, even if it is that Kind of just a, a little fine checkering there. I feel it helps the with my finish and antique and oil and stuff. It just gives it a little bit texture to pick up on. Kind of helps that overall look that I'm after. towards the end of our pattern here. And I'll spin that around. Okay, got beveled one direction, all I can get to. Spin that down, we'll work our way right back through there. Get a 
little bit of room so I can get my weight on there. These lines right in here can be a little confusing until, you, until you're looking at the background or until we get them beveled at the right direction here. That one's actually going to be where that folds. This vine here will fold underneath and you should be looking at the underside of it there. And that'll show, out, show up a lot better once we get done with our thumbprint here in just a minute. I like the close-up view that, that I'm able to give you guys with this angle here. I just have to be sure to continue to watch myself and make sure I keep our project moving along with the with the view so I don't get out of out of focus on you or out of camera. Especially if you're on here live, any questions you have, shoot them at me. We'll try to address those as we're going. Um, if you're not live, you're on the replay, go ahead and shoot. Just type those in as well, and I will try to get to those uh, as soon as I can. But anything I can address while we're live here, I try to do. It seems like I can answer questions a lot better if I can show you as I'm answering them as opposed to just typing the answer out. Last couple lines, I know it takes a little bit of time here as we're beveling through a pattern, but I'd rather just do that in real time so you can see it bevel all the way through as opposed to breaking the video up and coming back back on it there. So we'll do that. I'll go ahead and set this maker's mark in while we're down here as well. Just seems like a good spot for that. Okay. Now, time for my thumbprint. And this is a vertical line thumbprint. If we can see those lines on there running up and down with that. This is what I use in place of where a lot of people use a pear shader. Same thing, kind of work my way just down the belt, trying to reach everything I can from this side. Let's see where those, where that's folding underneath. I want to get right up in there and really get that shading and shadowing underneath that fold there. Now 
And with these flower petals here, you'll notice I'm leaving quite a bit of open space in the middle there. And here we're gonna come back with some decorative cuts and really fill in the, the open spot on those petals and bring a lot more depth in with just the, with just the cuts. Uh, yeah, this video, um, asking about this being posted, this is going to go um, by later, later this evening. This will go up on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. So you can be sure to follow that there. Any of these live videos that we're doing on tooling the patterns that are out of the book or out of the pattern packs are going to wind up living there on YouTube under my channel just under my name joe mealing j-o-e-m-e-l-i-n-g so you can look for this one and others on there as well and i know some of these videos can be be a bit long when I'm tooling all the way through a pattern. Uh, some of you guys hang, hang with me live for them and I appreciate that, but I appreciate any, any time that you do spend watching these. Sometimes it's not the perfect opportune time when I post them live, but I know a lot of you will take time to come back and watch this on the replay or catch it on YouTube there. And, I hope you get get some value out of that. Now this little little stump here is gonna kind of take on a lot more life as we go. Right now it doesn't look very impressive, but as as we go, we got a couple more tools that'll really help to to bring some life into that. You'll notice when I run that thumbprint I'm running it almost like I would a bevel and I'll, I'll be tipping that and picking that up to soften the edge as I move that along there so I don't have a hard tool impression right straight down come along where this folds over here I'm just gonna real lightly get in and get a little bit of shadowing around that corner just on the outside it's not a whole lot and you don't really see it much right now but that's something that'll pick up when we finish out and antique that as well You'll see me sometimes rotate that tool around to which side I'm using. The only difference is in how big they are. One end's a little bit wider than the other, so it's a matter of where they fit into. shadow in just along there where it is coming out of there you notice I'll tip that back so we're just getting down in that edge it's the subtle differences but it helps that stand out a bit
seems like each tool is just going to continue to build off the one before it. So the cleaner the swivel knife cuts you can put in there, the easier it's going to be to bevel. The smoother your bevel lines are, the more of a foundation it sets to run that thumbprint around and follow that line and give an edge. So all the little steps add up. Uh, taking time with the details really is going to make a difference. Oops, hold my camera still. All right, so we're looking pretty decent. Rolling along there. Starting to come to life. I'm going to come back with my, with my little homemade ground down tiny lifter here. Just set in any spaces between those little tiny ridges. That's uh, something I like to do and I've shown you before where you can do that with your stylus um, if you don't have a little tool like that. I'm also going to put it in here as a stop in some of those stumps. I'm going to do it right here too. I told you this stump here is going to start coming alive and this is one of those little tools that's going to start helping that. Come back with a small mule's foot. Right on those stumps. And then I'm gonna also come right down this flower stem here. We'll start setting that apart. May put one right, right up there with that, that stump as well, just right in that crease. Okay, next tool I'm going to grab is that small veiner. Um, another one I use in a lot of patterns and just not very many places in them. But you'll see it come out just about everything I tool somewhere. Put it right in, help stand that flower stem out and make that look a little bit different than your other vines. And in this pattern, that's the only place I'm gonna use that little guy. But now, this small round face bevel that I'll use, watch how this is really gonna come to play on this pattern here. You take a little corner of a petal like that, and I set this in here really brings that up off of there. You'll notice that in anywhere that we're fold it over. It's a big key when you're doing a fold too is to bring that right up towards that outside edge uh, and bevel this line really close to this outside line there. That'll help give that that full look of that folding around there. All right, start bringing that one up. A couple more places that I'm gonna run this round bevel at. Thank you, thank you guys for jumping on here. See more of you joining me live. If you are watching this replay um, and don't want to miss when we post new live videos, be sure to like, follow, subscribe, hit your notification bell, all that good stuff, depending on which platform you're catching this on, uh, so you don't miss it when we get those videos out live. This series that we're doing on all the patterns that are in the book, as well as the pattern packs. I'm going to be tooling these live on Facebook on our 23 plus page. And then those will move over and find a permanent home on YouTube on Joe Mealing channel. So 
you be sure to subscribe and like and all that so you don't miss out. Okay, we're gonna come in with just a real simple round flower center here. But now I'm gonna bring a little more life to that flower with this center liner. Starting light on those edges. Hitting that down in the center of each petal there. Being careful not to actually hit my center with that. And I'm gonna come back and with my bevel and bevel those lines, sharpen them up and bring them right back down to that flower center. And final touch on, we'll come back Crisp up that flower center one more time. Okay. Now I'm going to come back with my decorative cuts. And then we'll finish off with our backgrounds. Oops. Don't want to hit our camera. All right. Now with these cuts, no definite right or wrong. They're obviously not on the pattern itself. But... We want to try to bring a little extra flow to your work with them. Now, in a flower center situation or in a flower petal, I'm always drawing those cuts towards that center, and that's going to help bring that center out and pull those petals out from there. And this one's kind of fun. Like I said, this petal here, there where it's big and open, and I really roll that around starting deep and fading out we'll stack a few in there now that really adds to that pedal a lot hitting the camera there, bouncing you around a little bit. Here I'm going to bring some cuts in on this underside. But then out here, again, I'm going to really bring those around and help add to the look of that folding around there. So for a big open stump, that really gets a lot more life to it once you bring those in there. This could be my favorite step in leather work is doing these decorative cuts because they're there is no definite right or wrong, but they can really help to stand your work out. Spin that around.
Okay. There we go. Now this pattern here, I'm not gonna actually go fill in the backgrounds. I'm gonna leave those smooth for another demonstration that we'll wind up doing on painting backgrounds. So anytime I paint backgrounds, I leave those smooth. When I, if I'm gonna dye the backgrounds, then I'll bar ground those down typically. So hope you enjoyed that. Hope uh, you got value out of that. And if you have that pattern, um, hopefully you've picked up some tips and tricks there that might uh, help you along the way tooling that. And can't wait to see what you do with it to put your twist on it and make it your own.